Hi, I'm Daniel Sands. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Bricks from Another Galaxy. Firstly, uh, a quick apology for anybody that had issues with the audio quality in my previous upload. Um, I'm traditionally a photographer, uh, so videography is totally new to me. Um, I'm learning the ropes as I go along, um, and audio in particular uh, is something I, I don't have a great deal of experience with. Um, I have a little microphone that I'm using, um, and in my previous video it was on top of the camera, uh, and I think that introduced quite a bit of background, um, uh, which I had to filter out, which then made the audio quality a bit rubbish, I think. So hopefully this video will be better. Please bear with me for now, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this, so sorry. And in today's video, I just want to show you a, a quick introduction to some of the uh, base materials that I, I might use. Uh, so at, at the moment, I've been working on a, a Hoff scene. Uh, the Snowspeeder is the most recent addition to my LEGO collection, so I've, I've been trying to work around that in combination with the ATAT. Um, to, to generate this Hoff scene. Um, Hoff, as I'm sure you're all aware, is a snowy planet. Um, and the best substitute I found for snow in toy photography is baking powder. Uh, the great thing about baking powder is the granules are quite small. Um, so when we're looking at this um, as if we were the size of a Lego character, the balls of, of snow, baking powder, uh, are, are more akin uh, and aligned to real life. I've tried with flour, um, I've tried with talcum powder, um, and it's just not quite the same. So definitely recommend baking powder. Um, I use this, um, which is just quite generic uh, baking soda that I've picked up on Amazon. Um, depending on the size of your base that you're working with, um, you, you might need more or less. I, I get away with using about a kilogram or so, uh, which you can pick up in bulk uh, on Amazon. Um, you can also buy the little tubs of it um, in your local supermarket quite cheap um, if, if you're working with a, a small size area. What I tend to do is, is just chuck it down. Uh, I'm not exact or precise in any way. Um, I've got one of these um, wallpaper scraper type things. Um, that I use to move move it around the surface. Um, it doesn't lead to very realistic um, patterns in the snow, but that brings us on to our next uh, tool that we're going to use. This little thing um, has been an absolute game changer for my own photography. Um, I evolved from taking the very simple studio shots against the plain background uh, into trying to create more atmospheric scenes um, and I originally started with something quite static uh, so it just had a layer of barbecue ash um, and then one day I thought what happens if I blow on this so I, I literally got down and seen and, and blew the ash uh, and it created this wonderful pillow of smoke that photographed really really well um, the problem with blowing on it is if you're taking a photo, you're positioning your characters, you're trying to get the light in the right place, and then you've got to blow and click at the same time. It, it all gets a bit, um, a bit difficult, you know, especially trying to blow and get your head out and then take a photo. So um, I then thought, okay, what happens if I, I stick a desk fan and, and blow, blow the scene with a desk fan? Uh, it works quite well. Um, but the desk fan is covers quite a large area, so it moves a lot of air, um, which results in just kind of all of the scene moving at once, which you don't really want. Uh, what you want is a way to target uh, where these billows of smoke are going to appear, uh, especially with the type of photography I do, where we're generally working with a crashed ship or a crashing ship, uh, or you want smoke kind of between your character and the, the light source to generate uh, something quite more atmospheric. So that's where this came in. Um, 
I have one of these in my photography kit bag. It, it's it's a lens blower. Uh, and traditionally what it's used for is just getting bits of muck off the front of your lens. Uh, you can pick them up very cheap on Amazon. Uh, I think under a fiver all in delivered. Uh, so it's not an expensive bit of kit. Uh, and I would thoroughly recommend it. Um, I have dabbled with um, other atmospherics. So you can get uh, atmosphere aerosol or smoke machines. Uh, the problem with them is they've got a limited lifespan. Uh, so the atmosphere aerosol is quite expensive to buy in the first place and it's got a limited usage. Uh, a smoke machine, it's got more extended usage, but in the end you can have to buy a refill to generate more, sm more smoke out of it. Uh, with this thing, uh, it's unlimited. Uh, we've, we've got unlimited air coming out of there and the baking powder you'll find does kick up in the air but generally it will settle again uh, depending on the size of the area and the amount of baking soda you're using um, we can just bring it back to where we need it slight word of warning before we get started with this um, this stuff will go everywhere uh, where we're blowing it up into the air it will get in the air and it will settle all over the room. Uh, so if you're doing this in your dining room on a table or, or in your utility room on a, a tumble dryer, wherever you're doing it, uh, just be mindful that this stuff will kick up into the air uh, and it will settle as a fine layer of dust of pretty much everything in the room. Um, so techniques for using this lens blow, it's, it's really very simple. Um, the, the two ways we can use it is we can come back quite far uh, and quite high above the baking powder and just start blowing it gently which will just generate some soft uh, kind of non-directional smoke uh, that will just blow over your scene uh, you have to be quite quick with this, you see it's not hanging around uh, but if we we can build up a layer of it if we just keep going um, this is where it's always handy to have your camera on a tripod uh, with a, a shutter release cable if you're doing this because you can set that up to fire you know, hundreds of images while you're in the scene blowing around where you need the smoke to be and you don't need to worry that you've missed the shot. Uh, alternatively if you've got somebody else, a friend or family member that can help out taking the photos while you're making the smoke where you need it, that's great. So that's the first technique, just generating general clouds of smoke. Now the second technique that I found works really well is if you get the nozzle of this right into the baking powder and press quite hard, uh, it can generate quite a, a um, localised puff of smoke which is akin to an explosion. So we've got our crash snow speeder here, I'm going to stick this in the snow, snow, <laughs> baking powder just behind uh, and blow and there you go generates a big puff of smoke which photographs really well. Um, you'll notice with these I've, I've had this in and around the scene quite a lot and you, you will find um, you're going to end up taking quite a lot of photos of this thing in the frame. Um, with my particular camera, I've got a, a quick burst mode and I've learned the kind of timings of that so I can get in and out uh, whilst it's between frames. Um, in an upcoming video, I'm going to be showing some editing techniques uh, which make it very easy to uh, mask this thing out in post-production. Um, but yeah, but, I mean, for, for now, you're just playing around. You, you, you're seeing what kind of smoke you can generate with this. Uh, and just to give you an example, I mean, I can just blow on that, as you can see, and it does generate a similar effect. But this this lens blower, um, I would definitely put on your purchase list. Uh, so cheap and really, really useful for this kind of thing. Do do be careful when you're doing this. Um, make sure you're in a well ventilated room. Uh, I've, <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I've made a few jokes about this stuff going up my nose because I've I've done it too much, and it it's not pleasant. Uh, it can make you sneeze, um, so do please be careful. Uh, just start off with small quantities, uh, maybe in a, an open uh, outside environment, um, just to play around with it a little bit. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it gives you something to go away and, and work on. 
uh, and play around with. Um, I really, really do want to see any images that people make as a result of this. Uh, it's great to inspire other people to have a go and get their toys out of their cupboards or boxes and, and you know, just start playing with it again. Um, do, do send over the photos. Please do subscribe. Um, recommend the channel to your friends. Follow me on Instagram, Daniel Sands Photography, uh, and Twitter, SNDS Photography. But that's all for now. Bye-bye.